Iowa. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to a video inspired by one of you guys. So today we're just gonna jump right on into it. You can grab tabs for the riffs that I'm getting ready to play. You can check out my free guitar course if you're feeling like it. And uh, yo, there's all kinds of good stuff, but we're talking about riffs you would love to hear at a guitar store. Now someone commented on my riffs, uh, on an old video, riffs you should never play at Guitar Center, and they were all like, I would love to see these riffs, and I was like, I would love to make that video. Boom. So I asked my channel members on here for some riff suggestions, and these are the ones that they picked. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you these riffs. I think they're great. They're popular, but like not the ones that are overplayed like crazy on the radio. And uh, then I'm gonna break them down for you. A lot of you guys have been asking me to break down some of this stuff. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So the first riff is Revolution Is My Name. I'm gonna make sure the cameras are still recording. And uh, this is a killer, killer riff. It's one of my favorite riffs from Dime. Uh, I am tuned to standard. He is actually tuned down a, a full step to essentially D standard. Uh, but I'm just gonna teach it here in standard tuning. And uh, the riff is pretty tricky, you know? It has this, you know, varying different kind of tempo to it. So the, I'll play it once right here. <laughs> Okay, and then it goes. And so on with that. But um, essentially the first part here is, it's almost just like a blues scale, is really what's happening here. So we have, um, he's just pedaling on that low E string. And then it goes into this part, and what's tricky is it has this like shuffle feel to it. It's not just going like, it's, it, it's, it's a it's a funky rhythm. It's really cool, uh, real groovy. Of course, Dime always had that kind of like slanky groove in his stuff. So we have that going on, and then we, it goes like this. And he's walking down, like I said, just an E minor blues. So. Okay. 
So I go five pull off to, I'm sorry, seven pull up to five on the A, seven on the low E string. Then I roll my finger back down to that seven. He might not be hitting that seven on the low E string. He might, he might be just going, might be going open. It's a real quick palm muted note in there or just like a staccato we kind of uh, feel to it. So I just roll my finger up. It, it sounded close enough to me. So then I go back to seven on low E string. So then back to five on the A. So then it's a little walk down here. There's that blue sound I was talking about. Seven, six, five. Now this part here is three, five, three on the low E string and he bends it a slightest bit. Dime is always doing this. He uh, He's doing these tiny little micro bits. Just to make, it sounds a little bit more aggressive than, you, you can hear that, that rub that it puts to it. And then he goes to uh, playing opens again, but it's like a halftime feel from the first one. So, then this will look. And this is, uh, it, it's funny, what it actually reminds me of is the Carry On My Wayward Son. It's like the same note, so. So it's seven pull of five on the A, five on the low E string, and he skips the string here and goes to five on the D. That's it has this cool kind of interval jump. Right there. Then back to seven to five on the A, and then he starts to riff over again. So. favorite things to do is a power chord with the fifth in the bass. So he's playing a C, uh, C power chord, but instead of playing it like that, just third fret on the A and fifth on the D and fifth on the G, he adds third fret on the low E string, so you're adding your fifth in the bass. And he goes up to six, and that's where we'll kind of end the riff, but he keeps going with a really cool... One of my favorite licks of Dime. It is in that solo as well. Cause I'm hungry. Sorry, wrong hungry. <laughs> that was Winger. We're talking about Hungry by White Lion. Uh, another one of those, my favorite Vito Brada riffs. This is, uh, you know, definitely a more popular White Lion song. But, you know, White Lion's one of those bands, anytime you hear someone playing it, you're pumped. And uh, whether it's Wait or When the Children Cry, you know, any of those songs. If you just hear someone, there's so much respect for, for Vito out there that, um, you know, I think we're always happy to hear some, some white lion. So the riff is this. I always miss those harmonics. And then the next time around, I think I missed it when I played it before, but he goes like this. He gets, he gets a harmonic there. I think that's what he does for harmonics. But essentially we're just working right here. So you palm me on the low E string twice. So then you go to uh, 10 on the A, two more palm mutes, and then you're gonna go nine, pull off to seven on the A string. Now you're going to that eight on the low E string right there. I'm sorry, uh, no, hey, I was right. Now you're gonna use this as your pedal point now. So you're gonna go eight on the low E string palm muted, then 10 on the A, then nine on the A after another palm mute. Okay, so we have. G chord. Not out of tune like I just did it. So he hits that G. Now he comes up here and repeats the same intro section. Now from here, he does this little run that said I mess up every single time. So he hits that harmonic on there and I, I, it's like a 50-50 chance that I'm gonna hit it right. I don't know how he nailed it every time. But uh, essentially the walk up here is he's going. Uh, it's gonna be eight, 10 to 12 on the low string. Now these are all hammered on. Nine, 10, 12, and then nine, 10, 12. Okay, so. Then he goes, he kind of backtracks, so it's like a total Eddie Van Halen thing. You're gonna go 9, 10, 12. 
And then on the D string, it's 9, 10, 9. But he has a harmonic. Then he goes to the next time around, he just hits the harmonic. I believe he's hitting 7 on the low A string. Then 5 on the A and D. And then I hit 5 on the uh, D and G just because it's a little bit easier to hit two strings than one. So. And with that E, so. He hits his whammy bar in there too, but you know. You know how it goes. Give Me Back My Bullet is a really, really cool song. Now, they actually tuned down a half step for this one. I'm still in standard tuning. I'm going to keep everything in standard because um, I'm not switching guitars. But um, it's, it's such a, a great, great riff with all this groove. If doesn't, he, he's adding that bend on that last note there. I see a lot of people not do that. So it goes like this. Open hammer on low E string, then open A string. Then he goes three, pull up open on the low E. Then he goes three, pull up open on the A. So just get that first little section there. I I saw some people go like this. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. I don't think he's hitting the A here. The The A on the song to me sounds more of like a poppy kind of A. You know, an open A sounds different than a fretted A. So I think he's hitting an, an open A is what it sounds like. Now you hear those uh, little left hand mutes in there. Listen to the song if you want to get it exact. So That right there. After those mutes, he goes three on the low E string and open A, but there's a bend. It's almost like you're going like that. But you go. So. Okay. You could probably even kind of do that. But that's what I, I kept listening to it and I was watching people's videos and I'm like, I'm hearing another note in there. Like everyone was just kind of going. And I'm like, it sounds like, like almost like that, but not quite. And I think they're just bending. So. Give me back my bullet. One of my favorite Skinner tunes. Now this one was a completely new, I, I'm obviously a huge Jakey Lee fan. Uh, I know a lot about Badlands. I've listened to them, but I've never learned a single Badlands riff. So Jason, I think it was Jason requested this. Yep. Dude, thanks for throwing this in here. Gave me a real good reason to learn some Badlands. And who would not be pumped up to hear some Badlands played in a guitar store? Uh, so this is, uh, what was the name of the song? I forget the name. High Wire. Um. <laughs> good riff um so basically it's open on the uh, a string three times and then three he might not be bending i instinctively want to bend that string so i think he's bending the five so listen to the song if you want to get that part right i think i just out of pure habit i like to bend everything then it's open again three times five with a little bit of bend and then this part i go So I'm going open A string, open low E, three five on the low E. So now this part goes. Now he's bending at three again. Back up to three. Th uh, sorry, he's bending five. Five unbent, then three. So then he's gonna do a little quick pull off here. Five pull off three pull off three on the low E. Okay, so. And there's that whole section there. It's such a good riff. It, it's a killer riff. So we have that. 
Now the next time around he goes like this. More attitude on it. So the only thing that changes is that ending. So instead of going, he goes. So that's simply bending five on the A, five three on the A. Then you go five three again on the A. And then you bend five again on the A. Da -da -da -da. Makes me want to rock. <laughs> now, somebody give me a doctor. This is, you know, uh, one of, to me, one of the greatest Van Halen riffs. I guess any Van Halen riff is technically the greatest. But uh, it starts out really, really cool. It's one of the first ones I could play, and I played it wrong for a very, very long time. Uh, and it wasn't a couple years ago. I finally listened to it, and I was like, oh, I'm doing that part wrong. And maybe I'm still doing stuff wrong. You guys can let me know. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a perfectionist. But uh, essentially, it starts out with just some simple chords uh, G, C, D. <laughs> Then you're going to go G, C, basically like an A, oh, sorry, a D, not an A, D, and then uh, back to E, so. You have wave bar, you can pop it. This is the part I got wrong. It goes like this. So this little section here, I go, it goes three open on the A string, then two threes, palm muted, then open. That part right there, it, 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 man, Eddie's got groove out the yin yang. A little double stop here. So D, uh, D and G open, two on the D and G. Just kind of going from a G to an A there. Now this is where I, I always do it like this. Um, I've seen some people do it like this, where they use their pinky. I, I always kind of slid. I just liked because it, it gave me more uh, more kind of attitude to shake on that string. So I slid into the seven, five on the D and G. Then I go to this chord, which is essentially a D sus, I think four. And I'm gonna go seven on the D and G, eight on the B. Then I go to 777, basically from D sus4 to D major. I always like adding that shade. Then again, one of the coolest riffs ever. Save that one for another day. All right, let's talk about Electric Eye. I didn't do the intro, I didn't do the Hellraiser, or Hellion. I don't remember anymore. Something, I can't remember it now. But um, that intro riff is so iconic. Um, now, I did it before in a video a long time ago, and a lot of people complained that, because I played it up here. I can't remember where I did it exactly. Da, 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 da. Somewhere I was up here. Um, and I didn't realize, I, I just learned it by ear. So uh, they play it down here. But basically it starts out with an E5 power chord. Then you can go two on the eight. Okay. So that part right there, so E5, then you're pedaling off this 2 on the A, so the 2 on the D, the 4, 2, 5, so and I go to 3, and then there's two guitars, so I can't do this, so Everything pretty much stays the same, but now I'm pelling on that C note, that third fret on the lower string. Open A string. Then I go back to two. 
So I have this, so. I guess you could go open D if you wanted to. Just going to the lower one made more sense to me. So hopefully that that's that's pretty close, I imagine. Maybe some like true Judas like I said, I'm I don't know tons of Judas Priest riffs, but this one was fun. Oh. That part was tricky. I always wanted to go back to the C and then it goes back to that B. There you guys have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you'd like this to be a little bit more of a series kind of thing, let me know down below. And you know what? We'll, we'll figure out some more riffs that you would love to hear in a guitar store. So until next time, make sure you get the tabs, get the free guitar course, all that good stuff, homies. And I will be seeing you all on the flippity flop later. So bye, guys. Have a good rest of your day. Whoop.